Making the Future by Caitlin Lewis The house was beautiful with nothing out of place. The lawn was mowed to a perfect height with colorful flowers and shrubbery decorating the border. The walkway was clean, not a stone tipped away, and the steps up to the front door seemed almost untouched by the haphazardly world. Potted plants overflowing with different flowers and buds decorated the walkways as I walked up to the door, greeted cheerfully by Janie Jaffe. She smiled largely like I was her closest friend and invited me in. The inside of the house was no less perfect than the outside. Each piece was beautifully decorated and exact. The vases matched perfectly as well as the flowers that were placed in them. The sink was empty and shining and the dishwasher had a light, warm hum coming from it. As I sat down, Janie offered me a snack or a drink, politely listing options. After I declined, she sat down across from me. She began asking me about my life and my family, curious about what had changed since I last saw her. The family cat, Coco, was rubbing her forehead against my leg as we began the interview. This place feels as close as home that, as home did. But what I didn't know was that I was talking to a superhero. Janie is one of thousands of superheroes with skills few can match, yet with a name that is rarely recognized. She is one of the set designers in Stagecraft of Life, the foundation for all possibilities, the people who make it all happen. They need a vast amount of skills to do the most important and difficult job of all, create the future. And yet they are underappreciated and underspoken in a world so focused on power. When you ask a group of children what they want to be when they grow up, they list off jobs such as president, astronaut, video game tester, and decide starry-eyed and unknowing that these jobs are the most important to a powerful country. They forget the people who set the foundation for learning and living, the people who spend extensive amounts of money and time making futures possible, the people who devote their lives 24-7 to those who will become the future presidents and astronauts and video game testers of tomorrow, the moms. Janie Jaffe has been a mom for 17 and a half years, raising her daughter, Morgan. She took an extra step that most would not do to become a mother. She and her husband adopted their daughter. Janie had previously worked as an accountant controller for an electronics company, and before that, a customer service rep for a ticket tag and label company. However, she left her job when she adopted Morgan. There was no doubt that she enjoyed working on both jobs, but she would not think twice about going back to either of them. The job she has now, the job of being a parent, is far more important to her. She was raised with the expectation that she will become a mom, but she views it differently. She sees it as training. Because that's what it is. You, it's a job of training. Because um, you want to turn out a fine specimen, so it's if you've done your job in training that direction. It's a job from the moment you start until you're done because you're constantly in training, training your child. You know, you give them instructions, they follow the instructions. If they don't, then there are consequences. If they do, there are rewards, kind of like a bonus in a job, you know. Um, The only difference is you can't really fire them. Moms aren't always considered a job, though. It has been bounced between different opinions and politics, some claiming that it is a job while others arguing that it is not. Hillary Rosen argued that moms weren't a job. She was specifically attacking Ann Romney and claiming that she has never worked a day in her life. However, the next day Obama went up and argued that there was no tougher job than being a mom. Even on a smaller scale, the idea behind behind a mom being a job or not still exists. Margaret Fike, a woman who has been a mom and raised her kids, argued that it isn't. Motherhood is not a job, no more than being a wife or a daughter or a pet owner is a job. This is going against the popular Oprah Winfrey show, where she continually states that motherhood is the most difficult job on the planet. I look at my mom, a mother of four, and what she had to go through every day. I think about how much she had to give up to let us go where we want and do what we want, and how much time she spent helping us. It seems like every day was all about us, 24-7, and she never complained. Everyone has seen a child in the store that whines and screams when they don't get what they want, and everyone has seen the valiant storybook child who takes the man across the street or helps the lady put her groceries in her car. Can these be classified as results of parenting, moments of pride, or just the essence of a bad day? Janie uses these moments to see her daughter as a marker point if she's doing her job correctly. She spent the past 17 and a half years devoted to making her daughter someone she would be proud of. The most rewarding feeling is if I knew that my daughter was doing something <clears throat> on her own that I didn't tell her to do, that I would have done. All right, can you give me an example? 
<clears throat> an example would be if she were to help someone like put groceries in the car without me saying go help her do that if I saw her just doing that on her own that would be a good a good memory by doing this she can judge if she has done her job correctly or not however decisions are not always in black and white there comes a time when she has to make a hard decision that can really define the life of her daughter one happened when her daughter got her license and was going to buy a car the deal was if she got all very high grades that semester they would pay for half of her car Janie, her husband, and Morgan all agreed to this, but by the end of the semester, her report card came and one grade was barely not up to par with the restrictions for the rules of this decision. As a result, Janie had to decide whether to bend the rules and still let her daughter get the car, which would make driving to school and to practice and to shopping much easier, or to keep them standing strong and let her suffer the consequences. After discussing with her husband, they decided not to buy the car, but to lease a car. That way, she had enough to pay for the monthly bill, so she could still hold the repercussions but be able to drive herself to the places she needed to. This is a very, very difficult decision that would make her decide between teaching her daughter consequences and making her own life easier. There are times when it's harder to get the desired reaction from a child and she begins to doubt her parenting skills. It's when... Not sure you've done the right training. Not sure you've done the right thing. Like, did I forget to teach you this or did I forget to teach you that like you know did I did I forget to teach you table manners because I see you're not using them or you know do you really know them and you're just not using them so to me the negative is not sure that I've done my job correctly at these moments the difficulty of parenting becomes apparent Every act of defiance or rude behavior is a sign that something isn't correct in the training and that she's mistaught something. At this moment, it's hard for a parent to decide what to do. And, like all jobs, there are hardships and there are parts that remind you why it's worth it. What reminds her of how wonderful her job is is when she can see life through her daughter's eyes. Because it's totally different than through mine. Because a lot of times with kids, it's just tunnel vision and not the whole picture. You wake up on Christmas morning and you see all the gifts and you think, wow, you know, it all happened overnight and look what happened. But what they don't see is <clears throat> all the prep that goes into it, all the questions that you ask all weeks, days, months in advance to make sure that that experience is a good one that day. That prep is just another part of the job. Those sneaky questions and subtle hints are an important part that goes into life. She is reaching the end of her job now, and Morgan is finishing her senior year in high school and beginning to start preparing for her life in college. As imagined, Janie's life will begin to slow and relax as Morgan leaves. 